Yeah. Good morning guys, what's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan, hope you're having a great day. And uh, it is the morning right now. This is my scene, uh, this is the view from my hotel room right outside Top Golf. It's like just daring me to go play some Top Golf. But uh, anyways, we've got a fun day planned. This is actually day three of my Vegas trip. So I've only had today and tomorrow left. So we're trying to mix things in as much as possible. Yesterday I took a day off for the first time in six days. I played six sessions in a row, six days in a row. We definitely needed a break. So huge shout out to Boski and Joey Ingram for uh, showing me around town, which is really cool. We went out to Red Rock Canyon um, during the day, and then I went out to uh, Fremont Street. So that was really cool just to kind of see what Vegas is all about. And I'm absolutely loving it here. Today, we're actually going to go check out the Aria for the first half of the day. Go meet up with Johnny Vibes. I'm picking up one of his sweatshirts. Just got to show some support and love for what he's doing, what he's grinding out here. So we're gonna check out that room um, after meeting him. And yeah, that's really it. Potentially going to the Bellagio later today. That might be for a second vlog. Two vlogs today, two sessions today. Uh, we've gotta live it up. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get into it. Johnny the man himself, embracing the grind. Here we go, wrapping it up. Here at the Aria 2-5, we're playing six hand in here, buying for a thousand, and we pick up eight nine of spades in the big blind. The only gun player opens it up to twenty dollars, and it folds around to me. Easy call with our suited connector, although out of position and facing a much narrower range. Flop comes queen nine seven two clubs. And here with middle pair, I check. He throws it a bet of 30 bucks and definitely going to be making the call here with a pair. Turn comes the four of clubs. And once again, I check. He bets $60. And here, I think this is the decision point of the hand. Sure, he can be barreling with like ace king, ace jack, ace 10 with one club holdings. Um, but I think I get a little too sticky and make the call for 60. A little too curious, first hand of the session. The river now is another queen. Okay, so now it's definitely less likely he has a queen in his hand. So once again, I check. Now he thinks and then fires out $200. First hand of the day. Uh, I think this is a toss up. Um, I'm not really putting on too many flushes. He could just be barreling um, really big here. And I think one pair of hands would probably not bet this big or probably even just check it back. But like I said, it's the first hand of the day. We're curious. I call. He shows us 8-7 of clubs, 4 to be flush, and just like that, we donated a couple hundred bucks his way. After losing with 8-7 suited, we pick it up ourselves in the cutoff with an under the gun straddle. I add on some more money so we're back to a 1k stack, and I open things up to $35. The big blind makes the call, and the under the gun straddler now 3 bets to 100. All right, pretty small three bets, and from his position, seems like he has a pretty good straddling hand. And considering he's so incentivized to call, it leads me to think that he's probably got a premium hand. Like I said, it's very early in the session. I'm not really sure how these players play yet, but uh, here I'm in position. I make the call knowing he probably has a pretty narrow range. The big blind calls as well, so now three ways to a flop with 300 in the middle. Flop comes jack, jack, six, two spades. The big blind checks and the under the gun player fires out $200. This is a pretty big bet three ways in a three bet pot. I don't really ever see him having a jack in this range, given I think ace jack is going to be a little bit wider of his three betting range considering how strong I think he is. The big blind being behind me is a little scary, but here I make the call for $200 since we did flop a flush draw. Let's try to go with it. Big blind folds and we're off to a turn. 
Turn comes the five of diamonds. Brings in a back to a flush draw, and he throws out another bet of $200. Okay, so five of diamonds is probably the best card that we could ask for instead of improving to our flush. So with that said, I think we're going to have to uh, just try to maximize fold equity. He covers us, and we only have about $600-ish in our stack. So let's try to maximize a little fold equity that we may have, as well as, you know, improved to extra outs. If he has a hand like Ace, King of Spades, I don't think they're ever really going to be folding, but over pairs could be put to the test. I jam, he tanks for a while, and ends up putting in the fold, saying that he had pocket queens. So for only $400 more, give or take... Um, him folding queens there is going to take it down, I guess. It seems like we're just picking up the opponent's hands every time. So when we fold out queens, we pick up queens ourselves in the small blind. On the gun player, open limps and folds to me. Here, definitely raising things up. So I size to $25. And the big blind and under the gun player both make the call. Out of position, flop comes queen, 10, 8, rainbow. Awesome. Really wet board, but top set. We're going with this for sure. I see but a very small amount to $35 in this 3-bet pot. The big one folds, and now we get some news as the undergun player raises it up to $135. On this very wet board, we're out of position. I think we're incentivized to 3-bet here. I don't think there's any need to just flat call this since we are sitting with the second nuts. If he has a straight, then whatever. The money's going in anyways. So I put in the three bet to $350. And he thinks about it. And he rips his whole stack in there for about $900 total. This is a dream. We are snapping this off and we're going to call. a run out. You say call? Call. The turn is an ace of clubs. The river is the seven of clubs. That's it. The opponent shows us 10 8 okay. offsuits, and just like that, we have a massive stack. I haven't covered? All right. For the fourth hand we go, ace-10 offsuit in the big blind and we're playing five-handed in the spot. The underland player opens it up to $15 and he's been opening very wide and very often. He just lost aces versus kings all in preflop, so he's probably a little tilted. With that said, here in the big blind, I decide to 3-bet to $60 and now action on to him. He thinks about it and jams his entire stack in there for 180 total. Well, against this specific player, I didn't 3-bet pre to fold. I think we're ahead sometimes. Um, my ace-x can be ahead of some other random hands he's been holding. So, with that said, we toss in the chip. We call. Let's go to a runout. The player shows 4-5 of hearts, so we're going to take this down and stack some chips back in our direction. Here the table has been pretty short, a few people have been leaving and the people are getting stacked left and right. Here we're playing three-handed and we're on the button, we look down at pocket kings, let's go. I open up the action to $15, the big blind makes the call, and we're going heads up to a flop. The flop is, of course, ace, four, six, two diamonds. Why wouldn't there be an ace here when we have pocket kings? When he checks to us, we're playing three-handed. I think we just have to bet this with a really good hand. I size to $15, and he makes the call for 15 Turn is a seven. He checks. I don't really see a whole lot of merit into uh, betting this once again, so we check it and off to a river we go. The river is a nine. He bets $30, and I'm just really annoyed with this ace on the board. If he has it, he has it, I guess. I make the call, and he shows us two pair, ace four of hearts. 
We're gonna lose this one. That's gonna be the last session of the day as the table breaks and the game is turned into a 5-5 PLO game that we're not gonna play. So unfortunately the 2-5 game broke and it was really quick. Um, it was me and then the other guy to my right were just stacking. I think they were stacked like four people in total and it was just a quick rotation of people in the game. And unfortunately um, it broke after an hour 40, but um, overall really great results in under two hours in the game for 1300 out of it for 2560. So I'm never gonna complain about a $600 hourly. So we ran it up pretty well. The first hand was quite the donk, so we could have saved probably $200, but um, whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. We have, to, we have to get our donks out of the way early, but um, that's going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I wish I could have gotten more hands, but unfortunately we didn't play long enough. Uh, but later in the next video, it's later today, but in the next vlog, we're heading out to the Bellagio and checking out the action there. I hear that's a great time. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'm gonna keep, uh, I just, I absolutely love this place, man. Like, look at this view from the Aria. Like, the Cosmetolians right there. I can even, whatever. Hopefully you enjoyed, and Vegas trip onward and upwards.